Let's move on now. The Federation of Unions of South Africa last week fired its former General Secretary, Dennis George, but he denies doing anything wrong. Fedusa said he was guilty of serious misconduct with respect to his private investment in controversial AO technology solutions. But George says he acquired shares in AO on behalf of the Federation. He joins us now to tell his side of the story. Mr. George, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Um, when the good news, afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. When the news came out on Friday, Dennis George, the longest serving leader of a South African trade union, no longer with FEDUSA, 20 years in that position. It came as quite a shock to many people, especially those in the media who have been covering you for such a long time. Did it come as a shock to you? No, look, I mean, my retirement age was already a year ago when I reached my age of 16 and then the leadership of Adusa actually asked me if I want to, if I could stay on for another uh, two more years till the end of January uh, 2020 because they wanted to find a replacement and, um, you know, um, I thought, look, it's, it's, it's not a big challenge for me because I was also busy with doing my doctoral research, which I completed last year, and before that I had completed my master's in technology and innovation. So, you know, I've got a couple of ideas in terms of what I want to do, you know, going forward. But, but you will admit that headlines saying that you've been fired um, on the back of an investigation that Fedusa, an independent investigation, they say that they've brought, uh, uh, that news of you being fired uh, puts a bit of a, a shadow over your time as the leader uh, for two decades. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, uh, Fedusa on their side, um, we were busy in discussions with the Empowerment Consortium to benefit not only just Fedusa, but also COSATU and some of their unions and Fedusa unions. And normally before the listing of a company, there's a lot of secrecy around those discussions because people don't want to let information go out because markets normally respond either positive or negative. And uh, during that stage, you know, we, we indicated to Fedusa and, and, and to IO that Fedusa doesn't have an investment company because the challenge with Fedusa is, you know, 50% of our members are white and 50% are black, so we had to cross that barrier first. You know, as with Kusati, it was much more easier. They had the investment company, and for them, they could make a decision very, very quickly. And it was like, because, I mean, they've got quite a number of investments. And like the same with this company, it also belongs to one of our trade unions. Asatu has a big investment in this company. And so investment normally would be investments, and the methodologies that goes along with that we find that some deals work, like, and some deals don't work. Like in the case of Sasson, for instance, you know, when they gave a discount, you know, to the workers in general, and the market went in the wrong direction, and they had to refinance that deal because instead of them benefiting, they you know, had to pay in more. But, but would you then admit that comparing it to Sassel, that was done rather publicly, whereas the AO investment you're talking about, you said a lot of this needs to be kept under the radar. Mm. Some, some would say being kept under the radar because um, uh, uh, there's improper action that is happening. Not really, because the point is basically this. There's a lockdown period of five years. And during the long time period of five years, you know, you must also raise the capital, you know, to pay for the shares. And then also um, the, 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 the process that we used, you know, the process that is always used in terms of warehousing the shares to give the structures a chance to debate. You know, whether they want the shares or they don't want the shares. Nobody can force you to buy a shares and, and do that. And that is where the whole, you know, thing was pulled out of total proportion. So, so you're saying that Fedusa's action in dismissing you on the basis of this uh, investigation into your actions is blowing it out of proportion. And you also say that you were acting on their behalf. They were basically doing them a favor by, by making that investment on their behalf. Do, do you have proof that that is the case? Is there a paper trail as one needs yes, um, yes. when it comes to business? We've spoken to some of the union leaders were also in the meetings with the leadership of AO and with some of the other meetings that were attended, you know, so it wasn't myself alone. So now where are these people that you're saying the were point, all part that is, of it? That is what normally happens, you know, when something like that happens, you know, to try to find a scapegoat. I did not benefit one adotto cent out of this thing, okay? That is the first thing. Fedusa didn't lose one cent.
So, so where is this all of this coming from? If you're saying my hands are clean, I did this at a, around a table with other Fedusa leaders who knew exactly what was happening. It was all above board. Where is this coming from? An, uh, an, uh, an investigating body was hired by Fedusa to investigate, um, investigate you and your actions with regards to the investment into AO. And then on the back of that, you were fired. Where is this coming from? Ms. Nolik, I'm consulting with my legal team so that we must decide in terms of taking the process outside to the CCMA. Because this process was not also biased. Because look, if a company spent 600,000 Rand to appoint a legal firm, it puts a lot of pressure on that firm to come up with a finding that will make Fedusa happy. But when you go to the CCMA, there is no way that that process can be manipulated. Like, I wasn't entitled to call witnesses. The witnesses that we called, they didn't want to come. You know, so the process was totally unfair. And so, so you're saying the process that you had to face at Fedusa in this disciplinary matter, as it were, yes. you're saying that it wasn't constituted, constituted correctly? Not only just constituted correctly, I mean, I was meeting with the staff, you know, and I, all my staff was just like crying, you know, and they were like, Dennis, but what's going on? That's, there's cameras now in the office and listening devices. And they said that was never the democratic culture that we've established in Fedusa. And also, you must remember, we built this brand up from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, we invested a lot of time, you know, to, to, to give confidence, not only just in South Africa, but also in Africa and also globally. You know, I was the convener of the BRICS Trade Union Forum for South Africa. And so the levels of trust between Kusatu, Fedusa and Naktu, you know, was quite high. And uh, what is very critical for me, and that is what I wanted to leave a legacy, when I leave Fedusa, they would have something that they can really be proud of, and there's some money for them, and there's some things. And we could have negotiated a much, much fantastic deal for them. But unfortunately, you know, they decided to take this route and they jump onto this horse. And, and that now horse they you? must ride this horse. You see, because the point is this, he who allege must prove. You know, so you can't say, like, you know, Dennis came with a proposal. Even today's newspapers from um, 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 News 24, they said for those that can even buy the shoes today. Because the shoes is not going to run away. It is warehoused in the company that I am. And it's a shelf company that we bought, and there has to be a shelf there. Somebody has to sign the papers. And the books of this, sh this shelf company that's been opened in your, in your name, uh, are those books open to perusal? Did you offer that up to Fedusa and this investigating body to prove, as you say, that you didn't yes. earn a cent from that investment? Exactly, exactly. That is what the, the proof that is there, you see. But, you know, it's easy for a journalist or for any person to write anything and then just walk away. Okay. But you would admit that when you look at how uh, uh, this has played out, would you admit that it looks fishy and that there were some underhanded things that were happening no, there's financially? Nothing, there's nothing. I can read it for you. Like other trade unions, I hope that Fedusa and its affiliates will take up this generous offer of IO, send this in the workers who will benefit of the value of the shares and the dividends that will, they will receive. Okay, but if they don't want to take up the shares, it is their business. You can't force somebody to take up shares. You can't force somebody to love the next person. So you're saying that you just came across a good deal that you thought that producers shouldn't turn up and you were doing this out of the goodness of your that heart? That is the job of a general secretary to facilitate. I mean, the shares when it listed, it was worth about 500 and something million rand. Well, the yeah, shares, I the mean, there's obviously a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of focus on AO technologies because they've been front and center at the PSPIC inquiry the last couple of weeks. I mean, uh, you, your, your company, your shelf company received those shares for, at around, was it one rand fifty a share? The, trade, the, the, con the Black Empowerment Consortium but, but the received P it for 150 cents. At the PIC apparently Be before, received it. Before listed. And before the listed. PIC received it for 43 rand a share, they is that bought, correct? They bought the shares for 43 rand a share. And was that after the listing in after your knowledge? Listing, yes. Okay, and as far as you were concerned, there was nothing, um, there was nothing question about, uh, questionable about the deal like that. Because you are aware what we're learning now, especially through the PIC inquiry, is that um, 
a lot that was going on around the listing of AO technologies is now being questioned and that they were valued uh, for uh, in terms of it, the, um, the PIC's investment in them at far higher than what their assets actually were. Look, I must just be careful now because remember I can't speak on behalf of AO, right? I am an independent non-executive director of AO and I've been nominated by the PIC. But then so some would say that you've got yeah, a vested wait, interest wait, wait. then. I've been nominated by workers to serve on that bar to be a watchdog. So my dog job is to watch what is going on. But you're also expected sure to be the dog. <laughs> no, 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 I don't want this to bite you. You can't just watch. <laughs> I just don't want to bite. Especially if you're representing uh, the hard-earned money yes, and, of, your, and, of the workers. And, and we've got certain institutions. The most important institution in our company and in our companies is your auditors, your independent auditors, and then you have your audit committee, which I'm a member of. So before we accept the, the board, accept the auditors report, we have to study that audit report, we have to engage with the auditors, we must make sure that everything is about board, and then we make a recommendation, you see. So it's at that stage, as an independent director, that you need to apply your mind fully. And then also what happened was, we've declared now the interim results and the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and even though it's not even for us required to do that as a company in terms of the company act, they ask us, don't you just want to please just audit your interim reports because you know your book is audited after 12 months and we agree to that because you know from our side we believe... So when you speak about we and from our side, are you mm. speaking of the board of AO The board of AO agreed and we said, look, we want to be 100% transparent, let the independent auditors do the job, they're busy with it and they're going to release their report, okay? One final question. Uh, you speak about representing uh, or investing into AO technologies because you felt it was a good investment for the workers that you were representing. But you are also a non-executive board member of AO technology and you can hear it in the language. You feel like you're very much part of the AO family. Take responsibility for it, company. Indeed. Do you feel that uh, your role there, the lines were perhaps blurred in terms of who you're representing and who you were speaking on behalf of? Not really because, you know, I saw something here for an organization that I gave 20 years of my life. But I also had an opportunity during that time, you know, to empower myself, you know, completed my master's degree in technology. And I think that is one of the reasons why they selected me as a, a non-executive director because of my knowledge in terms of the fourth industrial revolution. And I, the president also wrote me a letter to say, Dennis, look, I hope you're going to deploy your skills because the country would need us to get onto that bandwidth. But also in terms of my doctorate, where we looked at corporate governance. And corporate governance is a very, very, very important criteria. And this thing has happened not only to South Africa. If we look at the biggest scandal that happened in this country was what's signed off. And that is when the corporate governance collapsed. And, and do you think that there, were, there should be question marks around corporate governance in, in AO technology, especially if you hear the testimony that we've heard from high-ranking officials from AO technologies at the PIC inquiry? That is the reason why the PIC have decided to strengthen the board. Okay? They've nominated a number of independent non-executive directors. They've also appointed the chairperson of the board. So what the PIC did was exactly the right thing to bring independent people in to the company. And then secondly, from our side as independent, we work with standards of the audit committees that is external from us. And then we also found some, and we cross question management. You won't want to be a manager in the company when we finish with you. Okay, we're going to leave it there for now. Dennis George, formerly with Fedusa, you said that you are consulting your lawyers in terms of whether you're going to appeal this dismissal from sure. Fedusa. We'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much Thank for coming much. in this afternoon. We'll have